My idea of uh, a perfect evening, if I'm not spending it with the other half, I have to say that, uh, is analysing stocks. I love it. Uh, I love looking at a company I've not looked at before. And I love the buzz of finding the numbers you're looking for, finding the patterns and the trends that you're looking for. I have a team of people now that do a lot of the data entry for me. They do a lot of the hard graph for me so that I can just analyze these companies and I can just look at the top numbers that are delivered to me in a format that I'm looking for. And I can analyze them pretty quickly and know within a few minutes whether or not it's a company I'm going to be interested in, in investing in. If it is a company that meet my criteria, my analysis then goes to stage two, which is essentially looking through the annual reports, really getting to know that company, the culture, who what, what's been done behind that business, uh, who the people are that are running it, how they uh, foresee the future for their business, that sort of thing. Uh, and then if I still like that, if everything's looking good there, I'll do my stage three analysis. That's price analysis. Is the price right now making sense? Is it a, a price... Uh, that's at a level that makes sense for me to be an investor. If it's not, what is that price I'm looking for? And I have a watch list that I'm looking at these companies and I'm looking at a price that I'm after. And if anything happens in the markets that brings it to that price, I'm a buyer and I jump in. That's essentially my, st my strategy and I absolutely love what I'm doing. Uh, I have some plans this year to start really digging into some FTSE AIM stocks, some of these very small businesses and small companies, in the hope that we might find some sort of diamond in the rough. And uh, that's essentially the work that I'm doing for my membership. Now, when I was doing this analysis myself, just all on my own, it would take me best part of probably two or three hours to gather all of the financial data from 10 years, 12 years of annual reports and get all that information in, get it all into a spreadsheet lined up exactly how I want it. I would then spend probably about an hour analyzing that company based on the financials that I have. I would spend best part of probably 10 hours in total reading 10 to 12 years of annual reports. These are big, big documents, 100 page documents. They take a while to get through. Um, I love reading them. Most people hate them, um, but it gives me real insight into what that company is doing. And then I'll spend probably about half an hour to an hour doing my price analysis. Is the price right for me right now? Per company, all of that per company. So you could be looking at 15 hours per company. Now, I'm teaching people how to do that uh, in my course. And certain percentage of those people are then going out there and doing their own analysis. Another percentage of people just, they want to know how to do it, but they don't have the time. And for those people, that's where my membership comes in. Listen. This is no big real sales pitch. Uh, I'm not much of a salesman in that respect, but I'm already doing the hard work. I'm already doing this stuff. I've even paid a team now that do my data entry for me. I've got a team of people around me that do that for me. Uh, I'm doing all this anyway. And for £20 a month, I'm sharing the companies that I'm finding uh, that tick all my boxes and meet all my criteria. If that is something that appeals to you, if that's something that's going to save you hours and hours of time of your own analysis and you want insight on that, you want to get involved in that, then uh, the best place to go is thecleantrader.com. Just go to thecleantrader.com and click on stock picks and you you can read whatever, you can read that information on there. Um, we're up to episode 26. I don't push what I do much on these videos and really the focus is all about the value of what we can share through this channel. But I just wanted to put that out there because we're already doing it for over 100 people now that are on this membership program and they pay a very small fee every month to get access to the work that I'm doing. If that's something that appeals to you, get on board. Uh, if it's not, absolutely fine. Um, I'm going to continue to do these videos. I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying it. I'm still going to only ever probably be able to do two a week at the moment because of time constraints. But, uh, I mean, we've got, what, 1,400 companies, if you include the FTSE 100, 250, uh, small cap, fledgling, and AIM markets. And we have the capacity to do about 104 of these videos a year. <laughs> so we're only ever going to scratch the surface of the companies that are out there. I'm getting loads of requests from people. Thank you so much for those requests. 
I will get to them if I can. Uh, and especially when we're getting the same request from multiple different people, clearly I will, I will get a video done on that. Um, today we are going to look at another company that people have been asking for. Today we're going to be looking at a company called Next PLC. Okay guys, so Next PLC, uh, Epic Code NXT, these guys are in the FTSE 100 into the retailers sector and uh, one of the few retailers that I'm actually really impressed with their numbers. I'm not quite sure how they're pulling this off uh, because the retail industry very competitive, especially in clothing. Uh, and yeah, I don't know how they're doing it, but they're doing a good job by looks things. Um, looking at the revenue then, uh, from 2008 to 2012, we're looking at pretty stagnant numbers in terms of revenue, sitting at about 3.3 .3 to 3.4 billion in revenue. Great numbers, but just not really going anywhere. And then we saw some improvement from 2013. We hit the 3.5 mark, 3.7, then 3.9 in 2015. Then we breached into the 4 billion mark, 4.1. And that was in 2016, and really we haven't moved anywhere since then. Over the last four years worth of annual reports, the revenue really is kind of stuck at that 4.1 billion mark, and we're not really seeing any obvious sign of breaching through that. Um, so that is a concern, but it wouldn't put me off yet. I mean, that's not enough of a concern. Um, but something to be mindful of is the fact that revenue hasn't grown in the last four years, but overall, over the last... 12 years or so it's it has done and it's done quite nicely um, margin gross margin has increased or it looks like it's increasing uh, we're at 16 percent in 2008 they're only keeping 16 percent of the pie and then we saw some massive jumps here and cost of sales actually has been going down during that period of time which obviously has contributed to that um, so with this growth in revenue what we're seeing is that the cost of sales has pretty much stayed the same for the last five years about 2.6 billion uh, we did hit 2.7 for a couple of years but then back at 2.6 and what we're seeing here is now a relatively consistent um, positive 33 34 uh, percent gross margin which is still low in itself but you can see the, the the improvement that they've made in that area has been quite significant over the last 10 12 years um, looking at expenses, expenses are pretty much solid all the way through. I mean, we've seen dips down to 40%, uh, but we started in 2009 at 47%, and we're at pretty much the same figure now. So expenses are relatively solid. I mean, they have been growing, but as a percentage of the gross profit, they've stayed at around 40 to 45% a year, which is fine. That's pretty decent. It's less than 50%. Not many companies can, can say that. Um, and then interest on debt is not very high, so I wouldn't imagine there's a huge amount of debt here, but we'll see in a bit. And then net earnings is really solid, really positive. Uh, we're looking at 15% a year for the last six six years or so, um, which any company that's making 15% net profit a year is doing pretty damn well. And uh, these are the sort of numbers I like. I like all this. This is looking really nice, uh, and I'm, I'm a fan at the moment. Um, let's get down to the balance sheet. Uh, I'm really, I mean, obviously they've got 1.3 billion uh, in uh, account receivables. So money owed to them by other people. Uh, this might be store cards and stuff like that. I'm not really sure. But um, that's a big chunk of money owed to them that can be classed as an asset because they're expecting to get that money in. Uh, they've got a fair amount of money tied into property, plant and equipment. But I want to know in terms of liabilities, what we're looking at. Well, short term debts, we're looking at 377 million and 900 million in the long-term debt. So add those together, we're looking at about 1.2 billion. That would take them about two years to pay off. So they're not biting more than they can chew. I'm pretty comfortable with that. Even when we're tying in short-term debt with long-term debt, I'm still at a level that I'm more than comfortable with. And they've always had a very strong uh, control of their debt levels. They've never exceeded it at any point since 2008 onwards to a level where I would be concerned they bit off more than they could chew. This, this is control and it's looking really nice i like that uh company equity is up to half a billion and we've seen some consistent growth in the equity of the business equity is the assets minus the liabilities equals equity essentially uh, owned by the shareholders of course because they own the company between them all uh, but half a billion there in uh in equity which is good and then but that's relative to the number of shares that are outstanding of course We've got consistent buybacks of their shares every single year, which is fantastic. I love that. 
Uh, that is a real commitment to buying back their own shares. That's going to help drive share price up. It's going to increase the percentage holding of the existing shareholders. It does a lot of good, uh, and I like to see that. Um, in terms of retained earnings, retained earnings were going up, and then unfortunately the company just suddenly stopped reporting on them. So I'm sure they are pumping money into retained earnings, but unfortunately their financial statements just stopped giving us those numbers, which is a real shame because I like to get sight of that. It's very important for me. We just don't have that, unfortunately. It was going up and doing really nicely, which is a shame um, because I want to see that if I'm going to be an investor personally. Um, and then the return on shareholder equity is superb. We're looking at hundreds of percent and it's always been that way. Um, so this is the return, i.e. The, the net profits that's being made, uh, 641 million on the equity of 553 million so yeah i mean that's stupendous levels and that's really impressive very impressive uh they're not spending a hell of a lot of money on purchase of property plant and equipment which is great and overall i'm saying here next are looking pretty tasty uh the margin is still quite low that's one concern the lack of growth in revenue is another concern um, <clears throat> the the lack of data on retained earnings is a concern for me as well uh, but otherwise there's not much to fault here this is a very solid company and not just a solid company in so much that they've had a good year they've had a good 12 years very good 12 years in a sector that is extremely difficult to do well in so I'm not sure what next secret is but they've done very well. Uh, I tend to not be an investor in retail companies myself. Uh, whilst the numbers look great, it's just one of those sectors that I just feel is far so so competitive. It's like supermarkets. I'm not interested in supermarket companies either. But you cannot cannot deny these numbers. These numbers are very, very good. Uh, let's take a look at the chart. We can see here from 2009, we're looking at about £12 a share. And by 2016, just seven years later, we're at up as high as £80 a share. I mean, that is just insane. That is, an, that is crazy levels, well above the value you're getting out of that business. And this is what people mean when they say you know, the market is uh, trading at stupid numbers because that's a, a astronomical share price that is far too high for the size and the, the quality of this business uh, and we've seen it crash down in 2016 again this is a monthly chart so each one of these bars represents a month by the way uh, and we've seen it fall all the way down about 50 percent from 80 80 pounds a share to 40 pounds a share uh, it then made its way back up all the way to about 72 pounds a share before the impact of the 2020 crash that we are currently riding at the time of recording uh, we've seen this share price fall all the way back down to uh, lows of about £33 a share. So £33 a share may have been a very, very good price to get into this company. We're now sitting at £46 a share. Let's go and take a look at the leaderboard and see how they got on there. So based on a £45 share price, we're looking at about 10% earnings return a year, which is pretty good. Um, essentially what that means is that if we were to buy all the outstanding shares in this company for £45 a share, based on the earnings per share, uh, we would be getting about 10% return as an owner, as a full owner of the business, which is pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Um, so that would indicate that the price is at a level that represents the value of the business in that respect. However, another way of valuing the business to, to ascertain the right kind of level price that we should be buying this company for is to look at the assets. What kind of assets, uh, what assets are you get in in exchange for your share? Now, if you break the assets down on a per share basis, you're looking at about 10p uh, to every pound that you buy. So for every pound that you buy in Next PLC, you get about 10p of assets, which is quite low. There are other companies out there producing that are providing far more assets for your pound, if that makes sense. That would indicate that the price of £45 a share is actually very high. Um, and so we've got the, the middle ground here of looking at the earnings and the price looking okay to looking at the assets, the price not looking anywhere near as good. And to be fair, you look at Next PLC and the earnings that they're making 
uh, I think it was 600,000, uh, 600 million a year, uh, but only having assets of 500 million a year. That's quite rare. They really don't have many assets relative to the size of the power of their earnings. Next PLC. Um, the EPS growth, the earnings per share growth is 7% a year over the last five years on average. So 7%. So if you were to then put that forward and suggest, okay, over the next five years, we'd be looking at a 7% growth or over the next 10 years, let's say, a 7% growth in earnings per share. Let's say they continued to grow their business at that rate. We'd be looking at about 22% uh, a year earnings on the £45 that we buy today. What that's essentially saying is that it's an okay price right now, but in 10 years' time, it would be a really good price. If we got in at £45, it would be a great price if they were to continue growing at that rate. Big if, of course. But really, it's a slow asset growth that's the concern for me here. Uh, and it would indicate that really, if I was going to probably buy some shares in next, I'd want to get in at a slightly better price than £45. Uh, £45 for me is a bit too high. And then we've got the issue of obviously the fact that the, re the, the revenue has not grown over the last four years or so. Have they reached their capacity? Have they reached the point where they really can't drag much more money out of the general public at the moment and they're going to struggle to grow any larger than what they are? That's the important question. And it's very difficult to ascertain that. Uh, but is £45 too high for me, personally speaking? Just a little bit too high, yeah. Uh, if there was to be some sort of correction in the markets, this is the company I would be very keen to start looking at because if that share price went down to 40, 35 pound a share, I'd be very interested to maybe jump in and grab some. Uh, right now at 45 pounds, it's a bit too high for me. That's how it is. Let's get their score done. <laughs> so last week, Greg's jumped in at fourth place, 84 points they scored. Next PLC score a rather similar 84 points. So uh, they match Greg's. To, to, I, I didn't plan that in any way. Uh, last week I did Greg's 84 points. This week next 84 points. Um, I would say Greg's maybe is the better choice here. But then next to provide in a larger EPS growth. I mean Greg's uh, were 5% earnings per share return on the £17 a share that they were going for. Next is 10% earnings per share on the £45 you'd be buying today. So uh, I'd probably go for Greg's. If I was putting my money on the line and I had to choose between the two, I'd probably go for Greg's over Next. Uh, purely because they've got a better growth history. Uh, but the EPS growth, the earnings per share growth for Next is higher at 10%. So difficult difficult to call it but let's get them up on the board okay so joint fourth with intertech and greg's are uh, all fighting for position in that joint fourth place definitely deserve that 84 rating uh much like greg's two very good picks and i'm a fan of them i think they're a very solid opportunity I think, again, if anybody was to contact me and say, I'm buying some shares in Next, I would totally understand why they were doing it. And, um, yeah, there would be a steal at £30 a share. At £45 a share, I think they're just a bit too high for me. Uh, you have to do your own due diligence, as always. Do your own research, as always. So there'll be a company I put into my watch list to keep a close eye on and to keep a, a close eye on that price. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you've got any requests of companies you want me to take a look at, please feel free to chuck them into the comments and I will do what I can. Uh, we only have capacity to do about 104 shows a year because I can only get two in a week. So uh, we'll do what we can. But um, thank you so much for your support and thank you very much for watching. Cheers, guys. Oh, 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 o